Okay, um, this is a, uh, in a way, it's, it's on topic, but it's not, it's, it's a, well, you'll see. <laughs> oh, me and my brain. Um, what I wanted to talk about was um, a parallel that I see happening between two communities, two cultures. Um, I worked since um, late 70s. Uh, very, very deeply in the deaf culture. I was at the deaf school volunteering for about two or three years and then working another three or four, roughly, somewhere around there. And um, I kind of lost myself in their culture. I really did. Uh, part of it, I know now, was because I had no culture. I did not belong anywhere. And that was the first time I felt any kind of connection with a group of people. Um, and that's another story for another day, maybe. But uh, back at that time, it was actually, uh, I was, uh, it was a great time for me to start into what I started into. I, um, I was fascinated with sign language, is how the whole thing started. And a friend of mine was a volunteer there and said, well, come on out someday and you know, see what's going on there, you know? And I did, and it was just like, it was a, a bar. I, I, it was hard to explain. It was just like, I knew that's where I wanted to be. I knew that's what I wanted to do. I was fascinated. I mean, it was like the, 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 everything. And um, that was a time just when, I was the first person, or the, I was the first class in an interpreter's training program that started up at one of the local community colleges. And it was such a new profession that I remember the first quarter, we were in quarters then, um, a professor came in and said, just want you guys to know that, that you're here taking these courses, that there's not really an, a profession out there for interpreters. This is all something, this is, we're winging it, you know, and... Uh, and just so that you know, you'll get a degree, and there's no there's no jobs for interpreters. What it was what it was was everybody. There were no interpreters other than family and friends who knew sign that would go with you to your doctor's appointment or whatever appointment or help you in court or whatever you know. And um, when the ADA passed about that time, um, that's one of the that's what really pushed the interpreting. As a matter of fact, they came in the next quarter and said, uh oh, erase all that this 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 we're, we're having demands for interpreters right now so um i bring this up because the deaf community when i started into it was a lot of what they called uh, oh um, no, i'm gonna forget um they had uh deaf clubs they would call them um where it was basically just your community they, they would they as a community would pitch in, they'd buy a space, and it would be uh, it would be where everybody congregated. It was um, they had uh, the one I was at had a bar, so that all the people who wanted to drink could be there drinking, and, and the room next over was uh, somebody showing movies, and another, another room was kids playing, and of course kids are playing everywhere, and um, it was just it was like a huge family room. Uh, the language uh, sign language the, the inability to um, uh, socialize with hearing people because of the language barrier pushed the deaf community or, or pushed and I, yeah um, I mean they had if they wanted to do things other than sit at home they had to do something as a community and um, and they did. They had beautiful lives. They had generational genetic deaf families that were deaf generations in the past, you know. And everybody was happy when you had a deaf baby because yay, another deaf person in our in our deaf community, you know. And it was a um, there was a lot of pride and rightfully so. They're good people, you know. Uh, they had a, they had rights to be proud of the, what they had done in their lives and and their. Uh, the uh, relationships they had forged with the hearing community. Well, 
the, things started to change. It was, there was a whole cultural change back then. Um, part of it was the ADA. Uh, part of it was uh, movies like Children of a Lesser God and more of a deaf awareness and television programming that was starting to have more deaf uh, exposure. And that is happening now in the autistic community. And what I wanted to share as an insight on this was sort of a, uh, a heads up, um, but also sort of a warning. Um, this is a, well, okay, let me back up a little bit too. One of the, one of the issues that there was a hot button in the deaf community, which is a, which we have a hot button in our community too. And that was people that were trying to step in with probably very good intentions and correct or, or cure deafness and you know you know you know of cochlear implants that was a oh, oh, man that was like that was like a that was the ci word you know um and you had educational um curriculum that was to you know try to teach well this is really i'm sorry i'm getting off a lot of tangents here but i mean back then you know, they thought, well, in order to function well in the hearing community, you need to learn English. And there's some truth to that. You need to have a certain skill in English if you're going to read things and write things and, you know, and function in an in English-speaking community. But where a big fault was made was they were trying to say, no, 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 no signing, no, no, no hand flapping, you know what I mean? And um, what that was, was a, um, that was taking away the natural ability of a person who's deaf to communicate because you are a visual person. You're not an auditory person and you learn English by listening to English. You don't learn it by writing. I mean, okay, going future down the road, yeah, you do study grammar stuff and you, you diagram sentences and all that, but I'm talking about the development of language. Because someone deaf is visual, they need to develop a visual language. This kind of brings me to a topic here on autism. Because you can see the parallels. We've got people saying, oh, no, no, we've got to help those poor autistic people, those poor autistic children. It's always the children. Forget the adults. They're already too far gone, you know. Um, but we're going to save those poor autistic children. And like they say, the road to hell is paved with really good intentions. And um, it's happening now in the autistic community. And I guess what my warning is, is that keep your emotions in check and try to keep a step outside of that, of, of the conflicts and step outside of the us versus them and look at it in, in a human look at it how you would look at it well huh, huh, just some of you may have had, had the uh the the nt world's expectations foisted upon you how did it feel right okay well in a, in a sense, that's what's, you know, if we're trying to change minds by saying, look, you guys are doing it all wrong, blah, 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 and, and you personally attack, they're just going to shut down. They're just going to close. They're just going to say, you know, this this is an angry autistic person. And they're all angry. They're all autistic. Angry. You know, this is how all autistic people are. They're like this, you know. And this is what happened in the deaf community. Um, I see it still to today, some, thing, some issues that were handled wrong. Um, and on and, and, and there's a time and a place to be firm, but there's never a time and a place to be insulting. There's never a time and a place because you just, you, you close the person down. You've ruined your argument. You have, you know what I mean? It's just, it's just lose, lose, lose for everyone. So try to remember that. Keep your calm. Remember who you are and who you're representing because every person that was deaf that misspoke hurt the deaf community. Every autistic person that misspeaks and misrepresents and uses anger or justifies things out of anger. And, and I mean, there's plenty of it. There's plenty of pain out there. 
you're looking at one, you know. And, you know, it's, it's, there's a, a, a woman, an Irish lady named Inya or Anya, I, I don't know how she pronounced it, Inya, and she had a song where it was called Pilgrim. And one of the lines was, it said, all days come from one day, that much you must know. And what it meant to me was that, you know, all, it all happens right here, right now, this moment. This is where everything else flows from. And you got to remember that all the time. If you're picking battles, if you are trying to convince, if you're trying to educate, and, you know, that you've got to always be very, very careful of the image you're portraying because it might feel good at the moment, but you may do irreparable damage. And it's not, you know, it's it's the death of a thousand nicks, a thousand cuts. That's how we're going to kill any success in the autistic community movement to try to educate and to get people to understand, look, it's a spectrum, you know, and it's okay that we are different. Um, there's good things and there's bad things, just like there's good things and bad things about you being neurotypical. But that's not what we're talking about. We're just, you know, listen, listen to us when we speak. There's, there's a lot, you know, and we're going to have to choose the people that speak, that represent us. Um, that's what normally happens in society. Well, anyway, I'm about 12 minutes into this, but something to think about. And that is uh, where we are as a community and as a culture in the autistic world. So I hope this meant something to some people. And if you have any questions or want me to elaborate on something, please contact me or uh, make comments on, on this channel. And I'd be happy to uh, share insights. And hopefully we'll get a, a good dialogue started. This needs to be started. So thank you. I'm going to talk to you later.